Hello and welcome to the JSA Studio. I am your host, as always, Nathan. And today we're going to be talking about how the football world has been flipped upside down, at least when it comes to the Big Ten Conference. And before we get into the details of how the Big Ten did this week, I am going to go ahead and ask you to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It would really help me out if you did. And now with the intro done and out of the way, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to get started, starting with the teams that treaded water. Basically, the treading water tier is the tier of teams whose play on the field did not change my opinion of them. Now, in the case of Iowa and Northwestern, they didn't have the opportunity to change my opinion because they didn't play this week. Uh, the other four teams, Oregon, Nebraska, Indiana, they handled business. I expected Indiana to win by multiple scores over Maryland. I expected Nebraska to win by multiple scores. I expected Oregon to win by multiple scores. Uh, Oregon actually did not score as much offensively as I thought they would. However, that doesn't matter as much as the fact that they dominated in the win over a horrible UCLA team. Just because they took the foot off the gas in the second half of the game doesn't matter a whole lot to me. Uh, these teams are all teams that I didn't really change my opinions of a whole lot. Uh, Indiana, I actually thought kind of played bad, but still dominated Maryland. Uh, the quarterback threw a couple of interceptions, didn't look all that consistent. I think that's an aberration. I think he's had his bad game now, which is good timing because he had it against a bad Maryland team. So I think you can probably look forward and say he's never going to play that bad again. There's a very real possibility Indiana is 11 and one at the end of this season and maybe even sneaking into the Big Ten championship game as they have a tremendously easy schedule. Uh, they should dominate Northwestern this week. Uh, Nebraska is probably the second toughest game left on the schedule. Should be able to handle business at home against Washington. Going on the road to Michigan State before a currently top 10 ranked Michigan team, that could be a trap game. However, by the time November rolls around, I highly doubt Michigan will still be ranked, let alone in the top 10. So I don't think that will be a trap game. I also think Indiana will probably be at least a touchdown favorite in that game. Uh, then you have the big one on the road at Ohio State. I'm not expecting you to win that game, but then you're home against Purdue. is a rivalry game, but Purdue's really bad. You should be able to handle business. This is a tremendously easy schedule for this team. There's really only three games, and assuming you can get by Nebraska, and Nebraska is an inconsistent team, I don't know if they're going to be able to make the plays necessary to beat any Indiana team that most likely is not going to beat themselves. Michigan, I think you're a better team than Michigan in all likelihood. Uh, I think you're kind of close right now. Uh, I think Michigan maybe had a bad game this past week in the second half uh, there, there's some easy stuff that they could fix but they haven't fixed it yet but we'll talk more about Michigan here in a minute when it comes to Iowa uh, they've got a test against Ohio State this week if it was at home I maybe could see that being a close game I think they're going to get their ass beat I don't think Iowa is a very good team this year I think they're tremendously overrated I think they have massive problems at the quarterback position and I still don't think the play calling is all that good. Uh, they do have a very good run blocking offensive line and a running back that can take any touch to the house. However, the defense is also not up to the standard of an Iowa defense. This is a defense that has given up points and has given up movement, more importantly. They've given up a bunch of big plays just like, oh, okay, you can get that fixed pretty easily. Do I think they're going to show up? Yes. Do I think that by the time we're halfway through the third quarter, Ohio State's going to be up by double digits and that's an insurmountable lead? Yes, I do also believe that. But teams like Indiana and Illinois and the next team we're going to talk about here have kind of flipped the Big Ten on its head. 
hence the thumbnail and title of this video. Rutgers beat Washington this past week. That was not something I thought was going to happen. Now, two things can be true. Rutgers is better than I thought they were, and Washington played like shit. And we'll talk about Washington in more detail later on. But right now, I want to talk about Rutgers. Rutgers is a solid football team. Looking at their schedule going forward, it is surprisingly manageable. This week, they play Nebraska, which could potentially be a close game. They're probably going to beat UCLA because UCLA is awful. Probably not going to beat USC. Very well could beat Minnesota. Very easily could beat Maryland. Illinois, I'm going to lean towards you guys taking an L there, but then you could absolutely beat Michigan State at the end of the season. I don't know if I'd pick you there. That's a tough one. Kind of leaning more towards Michigan State right now, but I could easily see 7-5 and five for this team, which is a big step forward. But the main thing I wanted to say is twice this year, I've looked at a line that Vegas has put out and I've said, oh, that line doesn't make any goddamn sense at all. I don't believe that line at all. And I'm going to pick against that line. Well, it turns out Vegas knows better than I do. And I predicted Washington to win that game. And I predicted them to win it easily. I think I predicted 31-17 or 34-17 or something like that. I predicted Washington to win that game fairly easily. Now, they did miss three field goals. If they make two of them, they win the game. Or if they make one of them, then we're tied heading into overtime. But if and buts get you goddamn nowhere. Uh, and Rutgers won. Uh, I think that... This is a decent team. I think they're going to be a program that is never going to be as bad as they have been before Greg Schiano got there. As long as Greg Schiano is the head coach, I think this will always be a somewhat respectable program that on any given Friday or Saturday could upset a team. However, I don't necessarily see them being consistent bull caliber teams. I think this is likely going to be a kind of depending upon how the transfer portal works or if you can hit on a recruit really nicely, uh, then you're going to be making bull games. But if you miss one cycle, probably not going to get it done. However, for this year, this is absolutely a team that can do honestly some damage if they beat nebraska this week they're going to be ranked and you know then you're looking at wisconsin ucla uh, minnesota maryland you can all win those games so you might be looking at eight and four nine and three hell you could potentially even talk me into ten and two uh, so this is a very quality football team that has a very manageable schedule it doesn't have a more manageable schedule than a team like Indiana. Uh, however, this is a team that can potentially get the double-digit wins, uh, either with a bowl game or without a bowl game. Moving on, I've got three teams in this next tier that I have called a tale of two halves, mainly because all three of these teams were really good for one half of football and really bad for the other half of football. Now, we're going to start with Michigan and Minnesota. And obviously, there was some controversy with this game. And I want to make this very clear. I am a Michigan fan. I also don't care. Uh, that player was not offsides. It should not have been called offsides. And that was a bullshit call. Minnesota probably should have gotten the ball already in field goal range because they got it at like the Michigan 35. And maybe they could have scored a touchdown to win the game in regulation. Who knows? I don't know. However, for the Michigan fans out there, I do think the play, had the offside not been called, would have gotten looked at. And there's a definitive possibility that Minnesota actually touched the ball before it went 10 yards. It looks like that based off of what I've seen. 
but God knows what a replay committee would have done. But even more importantly than what the replay committee would have done, I don't think Sharon Moore would have had the wherewithal to make such a big fuss about potentially Minnesota touching the ball that they actually would have fucking looked at it. Because I don't think the refs saw it. I think Sharon Moore or the Michigan head coach would have had to have made such a fuss that they actually looked at it in order for them to actually look at it. And I don't fucking trust Sharon Moore to do that. If it was Jim Harbaugh, yeah. But Sharon Moore ain't Jim Harbaugh. That's pretty fucking obvious. Now, I'm not going to be too harsh on Michigan in this video. You can go watch my hour and a half long breakdown after the first two weeks of Michigan uh, if you want to see that. But mainly because I told you this was going to be a close football game. And a lot of people didn't want to hear it. Michigan was favored by more than a touchdown, I think. But I said in the video on Friday that this is going to be a close game. Now, I thought it was going to be 13 to 17. I thought it'd be a little bit lower scoring. However, 24 to 27 is still a close football game. And a lot of what I said about what that game was going to look like ended up coming true. My general thoughts on this Michigan team is that this is a team that's going to struggle to get to eight wins. And that is not an acceptable outcome, okay? I said 8-4 and four coming into this year was the lowest possible outcome for this team that I would accept. So if they ended up 7-5, and five, which honestly, looking at the schedule, you don't have to look very hard to find four or more losses, okay? This week at Washington, I've been sounding that alarm bell since the beginning of the season. Then you have the bye week, and you play Illinois. Illinois is a tough football team. You are on the road. I believe Illinois will be favored in that game. Home versus Michigan State. Rivalry game. Potential statement win for Jonathan Smith, the head coach for Michigan State. Home versus Oregon. No shot in that game. At Indiana. Indiana might be, at that point in the season, a double-digit favorite over Michigan. Should beat Northwestern. And we sure as fuck ain't beating Ohio State. So you do not have to look very hard for four losses. Now, can Michigan beat Washington this week? Yes. Washington can't stop the fucking run. Can Michigan beat Illinois? Yeah, probably. I don't think Illinois can run the ball enough for that to actually be an issue for Michigan, in which case the defensive line can just get off and focus on rushing the passer. And I don't know if Luke Altmeyer is good enough to beat Michigan if they're getting pressure on him consistently. Sure, shit wasn't good enough to beat Penn State when they had that pressure. However, that being said, Penn State's defense is better than Michigan's. Michigan State turns the ball over way too much for them to win close football games or to keep games that are on the precipice of maybe being competitive actually competitive. Oregon is still somewhat of an enigma they do kind of run a gimmicky kind of offense we don't really know what they're going to look like uh, against a high quality opponent the defense has struggled mightily at times uh, Indiana you're not beating Indiana uh, and you're not beating Ohio State so can this team get to nine and three still yes but it's gonna have to take an upset to get there it, can this team go eight and four Yes, that's not the most likely outcome, in my opinion, because I don't think you're beating Washington, Illinois, Michigan State, and Northwestern. Can you beat all four of them? Yes, I don't think you will. The game I'm most concerned about is Illinois. However, you are not favored to win against Washington, even though we're ranked number 10 in the country. We're on the road, and we are not favored to beat a team that lost to Rutgers. So... If we lose this week, we go into the bye. Maybe we then get the upset against Illinois. Motivated team had their program pride hurt by losing to Washington. Maybe you get the upset there. Which case, emotional letdown game, rivalry game. Michigan State shows up. You lose that game. You're going to lose to Oregon. Probably going to lose to Indiana. Maybe you beat Northwestern to get bowl eligible. Maybe you don't. And then you've got Ohio State at the end of the year which is going to be maybe a worse loss than we've ever seen, at least in terms of the rivalry. Moving on from Michigan, we'll talk about Minnesota and then USC kind of quickly here. Minnesota looked bad in the first half. Couldn't stop the run, 
couldn't get anything going on offense, looked bad. But you got some going in the second half, should have won the game. You were the better football team throughout the four quarters this past week than Michigan was. Kind of got hosed by the refs. USC, first half, it looked bad. It looked real bad. Miller Moss threw a horrible interception. The offense just couldn't get anything going. You were running the football for no reason, which I, I don't know why Lincoln Riley continues to do that. At this point, you got to start questioning Lincoln Riley as a coach if he's going to keep calling the run so heavily in the first half of these games. Because the second you say fuck you to your running backs, the offense all of a sudden starts working really well. The defense is still bad. It's not going to get better this year. It will get better in the long term with Lynn as your defensive coordinator. However, this year it was never going to be an elite unit or even probably a good unit. And the offense isn't good enough to mask all of the defense's problems. Moving on to the Scarlett Johansson tier. Why is it called the Scarlett Johansson tier? Well, because these teams look pretty. And that is Penn State with a marquee win against Illinois, of all teams. Uh, Ohio State, who manhandled a quality Michigan State team, handing Michigan State its second loss of the year. Uh, and Rutgers, who we've already talked about. However, they deserve to be in the looking pretty tier. As far as Ohio State goals, we we'll start there. I did not come away thoroughly impressed with this team. However, I do think Michigan State is the best team you've played by a significant margin, and you looked really good. Uh, you, you know, Howard came out and then went back in, and then it wasn't, you know, not the same. Can he stay healthy? Because he's going to get hit sometimes because the offensive line still isn't great. It's better than it was last year, especially run blocking. Uh, however, they still have a lot of problems, particularly at the tackle positions uh, when it comes to pass blocking. And as we'll discuss later on in the video, I, I think that's what is ultimately going to be the reason why this team falls short of a national championship and why I think there are several teams that are just flat out and straight up better than you are right now. However, I think you are clearly the best team in the Big Ten. I think Penn State has the best chance to beat you. Uh, however, you always beat Penn State, so I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to cruise to 13-0 and and a bye week in the playoffs, probably win your first round matchup, and then lose to an SEC team in the second round. As far as Penn State goes, uh, same sort of thing. I think you're a good team. I think you're remarkably inconsistent on both sides of the ball. And I question Drew Allard's ability to win a football game if he absolutely has to put the team on his back in order to get the dub. However, this is still a high-quality football team that worst-case scenario is going to go 10-2. and two. I think you're probably better than USC, so I'm going to give you an 11-1. and one. Maybe you make the Big Ten championship game. I don't know how the tiebreakers work with, like, Indiana or maybe Illinois or somebody else. I, I don't know how that works. Uh, in terms of going 11 and 1 and potentially getting to the Big Ten championship game. However, right now, I think you are probably one of the three best teams in the Big Ten and a top 10 team in the country. Worst case scenario, I still think you make the playoffs as the third Big Ten team in. Moving on to our next tier here, we have the so close yet so far tier, and that is Wisconsin, Illinois. Michigan State, and Washington. Talking specifically about Washington here, you are a better football team than Rutgers. You should have won that game. If you had a kicker that could make chip shot field goals, you win the game easily. The defense played well. The offense is remarkably inconsistent, but we already knew that. Uh, you got away from the run game too much, in my opinion. And in all honesty, maybe you kind of got caught looking past Rutgers a little bit towards Michigan. It's okay. It happens to teams sometimes. It's not that big of a deal. But you've got a shot at redemption this week against the top 10 team. Moving on to Wisconsin. That's the next team I want to talk about here. First half, it looked like a repeat of the Michigan game. Except you don't have the talent that Michigan has right now. So 
you couldn't hold on to that lead that you built in the first half. USC came back. They're a very good team. Worst case scenario, in my opinion, they're going 9-3. and three. Uh, That's a quality football team. If they beat Notre Dame or Penn State, they're going to go 10-2 and two and probably make the playoffs. That's a really good shot to make the playoffs if they win one of those two games. Uh, and you guys had the better game plan going in. Now, Lincoln Riley, uh, unlike some coaches in the Big Ten, is a real football coach who's a very, very good coach. Made the adjustments in the second half, started throwing the ball a little bit more, and then they found themselves winning by the end of the game quite easily. Illinois, you had opportunities. You drove the ball down the field several times. Your defense played good enough to win the game. You had opportunities. You just couldn't execute. Now, luckily for you, you've got a bye week and then effectively a bye week versus Purdue. And then you have a chance at redemption against Michigan at home. You've still got a real shot at 10 and 2. I think you're probably going to lose to Oregon, but hell, you might not. Who knows? Uh, but I think you should be able to handle business against Purdue, Minnesota, Michigan State, Rutgers, and Northwestern. Uh, worst case scenario, I think you're probably looking at 9-3 and three if you drop either Michigan or Michigan State. But this is a high-quality football team and a playoff contender. They're still ranked this week, which coming off of a bye, you're still probably going to be ranked next week. You beat Purdue, you're going to be ranked. You beat Michigan, you're still going to be ranked. Then all of a sudden, you'll probably be ranked in the top 20 pretty easily. It might be 17-18 again. In which case, you lose in a relatively close game to Oregon, you're still going to be ranked. Handle business the last four games of the year end up 10 and 2 you're on the cusp of piss you're right there to be a top 11 team in the country that's the path for you going forward michigan state i put you in the so close yet so far tier what does that even mean because you lost 38 to 7 well you drove the ball against maybe the best defense in the country quite consistently and you had some Honestly, not great play calls on fourth down that kept you from putting points on the board. But if you can convert in those red zone or almost red zone sort of drives that you had, if Childs can cut down on the turnover, then this is a team that can play with almost anybody in this conference. Legitimately, I believe that. This is a team that is a lot closer to being good, really genuinely good, than I thought they would be at this point in year one under Coach Smith. However, you also have to understand this. This is a football team, much like Nebraska, that is not playing for this year. You guys are playing for next year. Now, you got a good shot to make a bowl game this year. This week... Uh, a Friday night is going to be telling for Oregon. We're going to get a direct comparison between Oregon and Ohio State. Uh, then you play Iowa at home after a bye week. Who knows? I don't think Iowa is that good. That's a winnable game. Michigan uh, in Ann Arbor rivalry game, potential statement win for new head coach. Uh, Indiana at home. Who knows? I probably would not pick you to win that game, but it is what it is. Uh, Illinois on the road probably wouldn't pick you to big that game either, but it's close. Uh, and then you end the season with a bad Purdue team and a Rutgers team that is playing good ball. But I think by that point in the season, we'll kind of know if Chile is, is going to be the quarterback you want him to be or if he's going to be the quarterback that he's been. And if he becomes the quarterback that you want him to be, which I think there's a definitive possibility he will, you're going to win that game as well. So I think we could see a 6-6 six and six season, but because of the schedule draw, which is honestly really rough, you've got kind of three extra losses that you don't really need and don't tell the story of this team. Final two teams that are in the bad tier, UCLA and Purdue. You guys are bad. Um... Maybe there's some hope for the future. Uh, this year one head coach for UCLA, uh, Purdue, you are got hope for the future because you're probably going to fire Ryan Walters after this year. So that is something to look forward to um, potentially. 
Moving on now to my Big Ten Power Rankings. Top three teams remain unchanged. Ohio State, Oregon, and Penn State, one, two, and three. Still believe in Oregon. I think they, I mean, it's tough, but I think they would beat Penn State if they played this year. They don't play this year, but I think they probably would if they do play each other. I've put USC back at four, and I've bumped Michigan down two spots, and I've moved Illinois up one spot. I think Illinois would beat Michigan if they played today, especially because it's going on the road. I think there's a very real possibility Michigan loses to Washington, but I think that has less to do with how good Michigan is or how good Washington is and more to do with the narrative surrounding that game being Michigan escapes with a win. And if you win, you're not really looking at your weaknesses and what you did wrong. Uh, And, you know, Washington got their pride as a program hurt this past week by losing to Rutgers. You've got revenge as well as a factor and a head coach that used to coach for Michigan. So there's a lot of things pointing towards a Washington victory. However, the most concerning is the fact that they opened as a two and a half point favorite. Moving on, I have Indiana at seven and Nebraska at eight right now. Really tough to rank Illinois to Nebraska here, potentially maybe even Rutgers and Michigan State are in that tier for me too. Really, really close set of teams here. And depending upon where everything goes here, I I don't know, but these teams are all, I think, very close to each other. Like Michigan could absolutely beat Illinois. They could absolutely beat Indiana. Illinois could beat Michigan and Indiana and Nebraska. Michigan and Nebraska don't play. That's why I didn't mention them. But these are all four teams that I think are very, very close to each other. Moved Rutgers up three spots, leapfrogging Michigan State. uh, And I've kept them at number 10. My opinion has not changed on them. I think they're a better team than what their record at the end of the year is going to show. Because they do have a difficult schedule. Uh, Iowa at 11, moved them up one spot. Just not a fan of this team. I just don't think they're very good. Uh, I think the defense has fallen off from years prior, and I still don't think the offense is any good. Uh, Washington at 12, I was relatively high on them. I didn't blame them for losing to a quality Washington State team in a rivalry game. Uh, But you lose to Rutgers, you go down in the rankings. That's the way it works. Uh, Bottom six remain unchanged. Minnesota, you know, probably should have beaten Michigan, but I still don't think they're better than Washington or Iowa. Northwestern, Maryland, Wisconsin, Purdue, UCLA, they're all bad teams that I'm not sure are going to make bowl games this year. Now, normally that's the last thing we do, but I'm going to do something new now. I'm going to move out to the broader strokes of college football away from the Big Ten and just kind of talk about college football in general. These are my top 15 teams in the country right now. This is not a power ranking, so I'm not ranking how good I think the teams are. I'm ranking them by how I believe they should be ranked via the well-known terminology of not only the college football playoff, but also the AP poll and the coaches poll and stuff like that. My number one team is Alabama. I think they have the best win in the country, and I think they're tremendously good They might have the best quarterback and run game in the country while also having a top five offensive line and a top five receiving core. Texas at number two, probably the most well-rounded team in the country. Uh, Even though Arch Manning has looked really, really good, I do think Quinn Ewers is a better quarterback than him right now. And I do think Texas will get better when Ewers comes back. I have Tennessee at three. Ahead of Ohio State. I think Tennessee would beat Ohio State if they played today right now. Tennessee has potentially a top three defense in the country to go along with a quarterback that looks like he has the talent to go with the first overall pick in the draft two years from now and a tremendously good play caller at the head coach position. So I think this is a very, very dangerous Tennessee team. I have Ohio State at four simply because they don't have a loss. 
Georgia I have at five. And even though it is a good loss to the number one team in the country, Alabama, they do still have a loss. So I'm going to bump them down below Ohio State. Those five teams, in my opinion, are the only five teams that can win the national title this year. I would be astonished if one of those five teams didn't win the title this year. I think it's probably going to be Alabama, but I've also said that like six years in a row. Uh, Penn State, I have at number six. They have a quality win over West Virginia. They have a quality win over a ranked Illinois team. They deserve to be ranked ahead of a Miami team that struggled this week and an Oregon team that hasn't really beaten anybody as convincingly as Penn State has beaten West Virginia and Illinois. I got Ole Miss at nine. Kentucky's a good football team. If I had a top 25 ranking, if I had the time to do a top 25 ranking, rather, Kentucky would get serious thought about being in the top 25. I think they're a very good football team that kind of got unlucky with their scheduling and the fact that they couldn't upset Georgia. But the fact of the matter is that I still think Ole Miss is a very, very good football team. I have Notre Dame at 10. Uh, The Northern Illinois loss, it is what it is. It doesn't look good. It's never going to look good. Northern Illinois might not even make a bowl game this year. It doesn't matter. This is a team that's going to cruise to 10-2. and Whether or not that's good enough to get them into the playoffs if they lose to USC is a conversation worthy of being had. I actually think they play Clemson as well, who is my number 11 team. So the winner of that game would probably move into the handle business and you're in category. Uh, I've got USC at 12, LSU at 13. I think they're both teams that have good offenses and questionable defenses. I have Missouri at 14. I still unbeaten Missouri, but they have clearly taken a step back from last year. Uh, And then I have Iowa State at 15. I think Iowa State is probably right now gun to my head, the best team in the Big 12. And then just so that the columns all line up and everything, I went ahead and said the G5 team, the group of five team that I believe will be represented in the college football playoffs is going to be Boise State. But that's just me, and what do I know? I'm just some asshole on the internet giving you his opinion. So at this point, I'd like to remind you to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you disagree with me at any point, or you just have something to say, go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section below. And now with the outro done and out of the way, there's only one thing left to say, and that's that I'll see you next time.